Don't be a Baptist preacher when you do it. Okay, let's run the footage. First of all, for the Hall of Fame, South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, Coach Mike Ayers. Let's, let's run the footage. A, a break, and I was given three minutes, and I have a seven-minute talk. Uh, so we'll see what Willie's going to do now. Uh, when the flag went down and we got penalized, it offered for me talking unfairly to a, 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 a referee, Lightman, my ears took me off the field and told me to go to this up in the stands and sit with the coaches up there and leave him alone. <laughs> so, Willie, yes, where's my seat up in the stands? It's section one. In 1979, a very strong Newberry defense shut down the Warford a week after Warford had beaten Furman, who was at the top of the Southern Conference, and we were the NAIA. And by the next year, Wofford coach Buddy Sasser had the Newberry defensive coach, Mike Ayers, on the Wofford staff. Mike Ayers made an immediate impact. Events today will cause lots of people to be able to catch defensive backs and wind up with some pretty good interceptions. The people who still hold the role of top defensive backs in the Warford record are still, those secondary records belong to the first team that he coached. It, it, that good. At, the, at that time, uh, Mike Ayers became a legend already on the campus. And when Buddy was given the job at East Tennessee State, he took Mike and two or three other of the Warford graduates who were coaches, uh, including uh, a person who would later on become the offensive coordinator and offered a job he held for 32 years, and that's Wade Lang, and he's here with us today. <laughs> Soon after Buddy was there, he became athletic director, and he made Mike the head coach, and Mike fixed that program quickly, and by 1988, they were on the top of the Southern Conference, and would be winning, beat NC State that year. The point in all of that is that Mike Ayers was a success before he came back to Wofford, and we were very lucky to get him. And quickly, I'd like to tell you that when we, Donnie Morrison, tried to recruit him, after we surely wanted him worse than anybody. 
we had not a chance because we didn't even have a salary that would meet what he was already making. But we made the pitch over milkshakes that by golly, Mike decided he would come back to Warford. And that was Warford's early luckiest day. I don't want to go through any of the records. You've got it on that paper. There's one that isn't on there that is important. And that is that he is third in winning as coach in a hundred years of the Southern Conference, a hundred years of Southern Conference football, including the East Southeastern Conference and the ACC teams. He is third in that in the winning as coaches record. Unbelievable. Mike was a great coach, but he was a greater member of the community, of the faculty, and the staff. And Mike Ayers, without any question in my mind, had a lot to do with the success away from the field at Walford as he did in the, on the field. It's with a tremendous amount of appreciation and also nothing in the world but hero worship for me to present to you today. Mike Ayers, a garbage man turned football player, and he was a garbage man before he started coaching. A friend for life, Mike Ayers. Okay, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank God for the opportunity to have the life and the career that I've experienced. Uh, it's not a joke when he said I used to be a garbage man. I was 14 years old. Uh, I had five brothers. We were all crazier than an alpha. A uh, tree full of hoot owls. And when I got 14, my dad said, you're going to find you a job, son. Well, the uh, garbage truck rolls up outside, and dad said, hey, go ask that guy if you can get a job with me. Moral of the story is, I got a job, and I worked that whole summer. That uh, when the summer was just about over, I started playing football. And I played football, and uh, it, it became, quite frankly, my life. Uh, I was blessed to have an opportunity to play the game, go to college, get a degree, find the love of my life. If, if you're not a coach's wife, you can't understand what I'm going to say right now. But my wife, Julie, uh, she, I, I won the, the uh, double lottery, I'll put it like that. Uh, she, she was so tough-minded. She was a school teacher, and I want to tell you people, don't mess with them school teachers. They're tough. But Jules would drive our three kids all the way to Chattanooga, watch the game, and drive our kids back. And to make that commitment for 30 years, it's unheard of. Babe, there's nobody that could have done it better than you. I... I've got this sheet here. I, I, I don't do sheets well. And so I'm going to basically shoot it from the cuff and I'm going to let it roll. First of all, I, she gave me that look. <laughs> First of all, uh, our three children, Katie, Courtney, and Travis, uh, great kids, 
they're fully grown now. Uh, that the, probably the, the saddest thing that I have to offer is that I, I didn't have enough time with them because I was trying to coach and teach and love on other kids. Coaching's hard, there's no doubt about that. But if you have a great staff, if you have guys that are in it because of the kids, if they're in it because they burn with the desire to succeed, to do it well, that, that's when you have a great staff. And that great staff, I had it. I had it year after year after year. We took a challenge in 88. Uh, it was crazy. I took a $12,000 pay cut to come to Waffle. My wife, when I told her that, I thought she was going to hit me over the head with a poker. <laughs> but I was driving back from uh, the Biltmore Dairy Bar. That's where we met. They were trying to wine and dine me with a buck fifty milkshake. And it's one of those deals where uh, I got to the top of the mountain. For some reason, the Lord said, you got to go. I came home. I told Jules. And I said, I just think I got to go. She was supportive for a while. <laughs> and then after, the, after I told her the salary, eh, not so much. But the moral of the story is we had 30 great years. The moral of the story is we had so many great kids. So many great kids. A lot of them, quite frankly, they may not have been the best players, but by the grace of God and a great coaching staff, we ended up finding some guys that had the ability to play the game. The game is not all about height, weight, and speed. For us at Wofford, it was about the grit. It was about the moxie. It was about the toughness that every day when you came to Wofford College, when you came to 429 North Church Street, you would have to do the things that it took to be successful, and that was a hard, hard job. We gave that up front right away to the parents and to the student athlete. Those that accepted, we knew we had a shot. Those that didn't, we didn't care because they wouldn't have made it anyway. The thing that I always wanted was for our guys to do the best you can do. It started with very simple tasks. Put your hand on the line. Not over the line, not behind the line. Put your hand on the line. And we started from there in 1988 at 5 a.m. in the morning. We took a journey. We took a journey that nobody thought we could do. But by the grace of God, by having a staff that was unbelievable, by having kids that bought in 100% to what we were doing, guess what? We started winning. Guess what? We went to the national playoffs. Guess what? We did it more than once. The biggest lesson that I tried to teach and that we tried to teach as coaches is simply this. Life is hard. Life is hard. When you get knocked down, you got a choice. You either stay down, lay down, give in, or give out. What's your choice? God bless you.